Hello, Thomas with Emit here with a video on how to set up the AFRC. Let's assume that it's already been installed at this point physically and wired in. So this is the EIM home screen. It might look a little different like this on older versions, but the button names here should be similar. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure you're in engineering access mode. So type in the engineering password that came with your unit and hit submit. After submitting, it should say Access Engineering at the bottom. After that, go to the Engine Info screen and choose your engine configuration on the right side, whether it's rich or lean burn, single or dual bank, wide or narrow band, and set point or auto control. If you have an AFRC light, you're required to have a single bank, and you're also required to have set point control as your control type. In set point control, the user will pick the target O2 set point. In auto control, which is available for rich burn only, the AFRC itself will choose the set point and it will adjust the set point as needed when engine operations change. So I'll pick single bank auto control and hit submit. Now go to the AFRC home screen, setup. The next thing you want to set up is the run signal trigger. The run signal trigger is what uh, condition the AFRC will use to consider the engine to be running. If you use auto detect, it will use any of these. Usually, pre-cat thermocouple is the sensor used. You can choose the trigger temperature based on the engine. If the engine runs hotter, you can put the trigger temperature as higher so that the AFRC does not begin controlling until the catalyst reaches that temperature. Below a certain temperature, the catalyst will not be converting the um, pollutants anyway. In this case, I'll leave it at 450. Go back home. Optionally, you can set up alarms if you'd like. Generally, you'll have a pre and a post cat TC alarm at somewhere around this value, 1250, and an action of shutdown. This protects your catalyst in case it's getting over temperatured. Make sure it's enabled, which will be a dark gray arrow or X. If the action is shut down, then when the alarm happens, the AFRC will trip its error relay, which is one of the pins on the uh, input connector. This relay should be connected to an enunciator so that the engine is actually shut down. If the action is warning, then the engine will not be shut down, but it will generate uh, an event on the alarm screen. When first installed, you might want to make a couple adjustments to the engineering setup. The bank sensitivity will determine how fast the valve will be changing. In some situations, you might want the valve to change more slowly or more quickly. 50 is the default, so in this case, it's a little on the slow side. The control type, if it's auto control, you have a setting here for rich or lean. If you put it on the rich side, it will tend to settle a bit more on the rich side, and on, if you put it lean, it will settle a bit more on the lean side. This can be used to make a bit of an adjustment based on your permit. 50 is the default in this case as well. If you select this button, you can change back to set point. The load delay is the amount of time after the run signal is triggered before the AFRC will actually begin controlling. To set the valve home position with the valve control in manual, you set the valve position to some value and then go from manual to auto. Whatever the position is when it goes from manual to auto will be saved as the home position. In this case, a red line was placed there and the home position is now 349. When the valve control shows engaged, then the AFRC is ready to control when the run signal happens. That's all you need to know for basic setup of the AFRC. Thanks for watching.